Hello financial investors and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing our stock market weekly recap for the 13th to the 17th of July 2020. We're going to go ahead and cover the four main indexes changes for this week. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500, see which stocks were strong, which stocks were weak. Also take a look at individual sectors, whether they were positive or negative. Up on the screen now is last week's. Here you can see that the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA over here and Google pretty much carry the rest of the market. A lot of the market was pretty negative last week with financials being pretty positive, but the rest of the market being pretty low. This week completely flipped. The FANG stocks took a break and the rest of the market kind of picked up the slack, which we'll check out here in just a second. Once we cover the four main indexes, we're going to go ahead and take a look at oil, the dollar, silver, gold, bonds, and finish it up by taking a look at the 10-year and current mortgage rates. I like to do these stock market recaps caps because it helps you guys, it helps me kind of keep track of what is going on in the market. How has the market performed coming out of this recession here that we had in 2020? And also, I like to take a look at how the market moves on a week by week basis, depending on what's really going on there. Right now, we had financials kick off last week. Going into this week, we had a few other companies kick off, such as Netflix, which they did really good on their earnings, but they they kind of tanked this week, losing over 10% after hours after their earnings. So we'll take a look at some of that here in the heat map. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. But with that said, if you are brand new to my channel, have not yet subscribed, we really appreciate it if you do subscribe down below. If you have any comments or questions or would like to see some topics discussed here on the channel, drop it down in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up. I'm hoping to begin to have more time my my daughter is now eight months she's starting to get to that phase now where i don't always have to be there with her and the wifey and the other kid trying to you know be there so hopefully in the future i'll have more time to begin doing more videos than i have been doing in these past few weeks or months you know it's been really slow here as far as the content that we're producing here on Mondays, we're doing our Monday buys and on Saturdays, we're doing our stock market reclaps. But I'd like to get back into the business of going over how to videos, how to do specific things on either M1 Finance, Spiral Edge, Robinhood, Webull. For those that are still using Webull, you know, it's a Chinese app. Be careful if they start banning Chinese apps. But let's go ahead and get into the video. So last week, pretty much positive besides the Russell 2000 was negative last week. So a little bit of a surprise that this week we'll go ahead and see that Russell outperformed the other three indexes. And it was a bit wonky, which we'll cover here in just a second. But everything was pretty much positive last week besides the Russell 2000. Now jumping into this week, sorry for the blinding color here. I know it's a bit of a difference there and zoom in in there. The S&P 500 this week put on 1.25%. I believe Thursday would have been a good day, but jobs came out and employment had a still a slip by a little over a million. Not too bad. You know, it's slowing down steady, steady. They also discussed that this week they're going to stop the $600 unemployment uh, bill that they've been going and going on. You know, I haven't been unemployed. I haven't had too many people tell me that they've been affected negatively, but you know, nobody wants to share their negative news. That's just how life is. And I do know a few individuals who are unemployed. They took that and they're actually getting paid quite a bit more. And you know, they're, they're unhappy that it's going to be ending, but I think it'll be a good step in getting people who are either, you know, unemployed and not really looking kind of focus more on trying to transition. I've seen a lot of influencers, a lot of people who are teachers, a lot of um, individuals who were doing, you know, they were just working in the business sector. They were working in a cubicle job. And in March, when this whole pandemic hit, the recession hit, they lost their jobs. They went unemployed. But what did they do? They went out there. They created jobs for themselves. They either set up blogs. They set up uh, fitness programs. They started doing, you know, health related content, not just on YouTube, but I've seen a lot of it kind of going out and about as far as friends starting up their own lines of business from home where they're selling products, clothes, and others are starting their own sort of um, 
IT areas where they're fixing computers. So there's a lot of self people, you know, people that took action during this downturn. So I'm really happy to see a lot of people take action during this downturn when they had that free time available to just kind of put their best foot forward and make a smart move. So if you know anybody that did something, you know, took action, let me know down in the comment section below. I always like to hear about those things and let's go on to the Dow Jones. So here is where the disconnect is. Take a look at the indexes. The S&P 500 up 1.25, the Dow Jones up over 1% from that at 2.29%. So here we go. 1.25, 2.29, and guess what? The Nasdaq this week down 1.08%. So a bit of a disconnect there. And the FANG stocks kind of play a part in how the NASDAQ has been affected. The rest of the S&P 500, the other 505 stocks essentially popped the market higher. It was those FANG stocks that really kind of didn't perform well this week. And the Russell 2000, as we kind of discussed earlier, they did really bad last week. They were the only negative performer last week. Well, guess what? This week, they're up 3.56%. Year to date, they are still down 11.7%. The S&P 500 is down 0.19%. The Dow Jones is down 6.54%. But the NASDAQ has been the best performer. So, you know, if they're giving up 1% this week, that is completely fine. This has been near all-time highs here just recently, breaking above that 10,000. I see an investors hoping for a NASDAQ at 11,000. I would really like to see a correction before we see us continuing to move to new highs because we really don't know what these earnings in 2020 are going to do. If we are going to be able to fully recover, I've seen a lot of businesses just decide to close their doors and that's where other individuals are kind of stepping up and creating their own businesses. So, interesting mix there. Now, here is the heat map that I was talking about. This is over at finviz.com on the right-hand side. You can check on the heat map. Now, what stands out to you here, or, you know, what stands out to me is take a look at the FANG stocks this week. Facebook, negative 1.24%. Amazon, down 7.44%. We also have Apple, you know, essentially flat on the week, up 0.42% followed right behind by Microsoft, negative 5.05, Netflix down 10.16%, NVIDIA down 2.65, and Google down 1.44%. So there's the Fang, Fangum stocks there, all negative, you know, all down by, you know, besides Apple there, but, you know, majority of them are negative this week. But guess what happened? Take a look at the health sector. We have Johnson & Johnson up 4.9%, Pfizer up 7.15%, Merck up 409 and it goes on and on. You can see a lot of strength in the financial credit service, even JP Morgan, one of our best financials out there. I don't invest in anything besides JP Morgan, and I did buy another sort of small community bank, but there's a lot of green out there. Utility is kicking it. We have um, the Southern Company up 2.54, Duke Energy there up 1.33, and uh, NEE, I, I, I forgot the company for NEEO, oh, Next Era Energy. I know that's a pretty popular one with dividend investors up 6.08. So there's a lot of positive out there. Just kind of taking a glance here. If you guys want to pause the video and take a look at this individually, I will have this screenshot plastered over on my Facebook page and over on Instagram. If you guys are following me on either one of those areas, you'll kind of see this along with the breakdown we're, we're kind of going over this week. So I think there's a lot of, you know, there what there has been a lot of value out there that hasn't really responded as other companies have. Well, I think now we're starting to see some of those utilities kind of kicking up. We don't see the rates kind of waking up. I think my rates have been a little bit lower, but we see Altria up 3.15, Philip Morris up 2.84, Coca-Cola up 3.7. So there's a lot of really good movement out there, kind of moving up the rest of the market there. Now, oil this week, pretty much flat. It says positive by 0.26%. The dollar continuing to get weaker. You know, President Trump and the Fed have been out there. You know, President Trump is wanting a weaker dollar. Weaker dollar hurts the middle class. It, it doesn't allow you to buy more. You know, you're paying more for a product in the end of the day. 
we might be, you know, better for the market with that weaker dollar, but not so good for consumers. Trust, I'm not trust, uh, silver this week up 3.33%. So this one's kind of kicking it up, still around that $18 point. We see some highs here, but it really hasn't hit that high again. So 18.35, I don't think that was this week. I believe it was the, uh, the, yeah, the last week here. 18.35 is the last the past week. So, you know, it still had a pretty close high here, but retraced back down. Gold here. Hitting some new highs once again this week. Overall up 0.57% for this week. But you can see a bit of a sell-off here on Thursday. I'm not sure if we take a look at the dollar here. Gold went down. Dollar went up slightly and it kind of came back down. I don't see any sort of correlation there between those. But I thought I, I, thought I may have. <laughs> and then bonds up 0.34%. The 10-year is at 0.63. So last week we had the... 10 year at 0.63 so it essentially stayed flat you know flat flat i think the market likes to see that i think for a point the 10 year rate was down in point fours i believe you know i don't know i think i just started doing this not too long ago but i like writing it down because this is kind of an easy area to kind of go back and look at especially with the picture here on the side and then we have these videos to kind of go over as well i'd like to kind of continue to post more information on a week by week basis over on my Facebook page as far as you know either unemployment numbers I know that was something I wanted to post I kind of forgot to do it this week but something I will continue to try and do here in the future a little bit more often and then mortgage rates fell to a not a new low but very low of 3.31 percent I believe the lowest was 3.3 percent but we're still getting some really good refinancing rates I am unsure if I want to complete my refinance because I'm paying $400 for my refinance. I'm keeping my same term. I'm keeping my same. I'm lowering my rate from a 3.25 to no, I'm 3.75. I'm lowering it down to a 2.75, so it's a 1% basis difference. But I'm having another house built now. I'm having a four-bedroom with an office uh, built. And it's going to take about six months to build, but in that six months, is that lower, is that $400 with that reduced mortgage going to make up the difference there? So I'm eventually going to sell out of my 3.2 and then move into the 4, uh, four 2.5, but um, because this one wouldn't have a really good numbers as far as the return on investment would be like 4 or 5%. So discuss it with my other investor friends here it just wouldn't make sense unless I kind of kept it for the appreciation but I can sell it completely tax-free after I move I can sell it because I've lived here for seven years as long as I sell it within the next I believe it's two years then anything that I make from the appreciation is completely tax-free so you know I, I saw this article in my email from the business association here that they were really happy you know the u.s small business administration yeah, small business administration were happy to announce that the idle program is complete and that they had issued over 200 billion dollars out in loans to help businesses so they were really proud about this you know a total of 20 billion dollars in emergency funding all caused by this government shutdown, this mandated government shutdown for businesses to completely close down. You know, I think that that's going to hurt for quite a while. And a lot of those businesses may not recover, you know, in, in a short amount of time or just may not recover at all. I know a lot of um, small businesses here, you know, again, they just had to kind of close up their shops. They closed down. People were buying their gift cards, but that's a small way to help a business and then you know <laughs> my feed my feed on Facebook I'm subscribed to over a hundred different financial channels that if you have a financial channel out there and you're brand new let me know down in the comment section below I will subscribe to you as well and check out your videos but uh, you know I just thought every single video of my feed for one point here there was six hours ago one day ago 12 days 12 hours ago eight hours ago 13 hours ago you know there's just so many stimulus videos and you know I give it to them because 
I, I don't I don't know how there's that much stimulus update information going on on a couple hourly basis. I know Kevin puts out a video maybe every two to four hours. And the other ones are kind of right in the same boat, the tax accounting guy. And then Erica, I know she's blown her channel up from 2,000 subscribers to 50,000 subscribers just like in a month or two by creating a, a bunch of stimulus videos. So interesting there. Early morning notifications. So M1 Finance, if you guys are on the M1 Finance platform, let me know in the comment section below if your other brokers do this. I would like to know. I get notifications from M1 Finance, but I never get notifications from Merrill Edge. I think I get notifications from Robinhood, but I don't have any stocks over on Robinhood anymore. I am emptying out my Robinhood account and I'm emptying out my Webull account. And I moved that taxable cash over into my Fidelity account. I just haven't purchased anything over there yet. And then my wife's, she's transferring her her 401b i believe it's a 401b or a 403b from she quit her medical job and we're trying to get that transferred over to a rollover ira that way she's not getting hit with the administrative fees and we're just kind of taking in all the appreciation and capital appreciation and dividends without having any accounting fees in that account so that is it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video definitely let me know down in the comment section below what you are currently thinking of the market you know how has the market been treating you are you pretty positive are you pretty uh, upset that the market's not tanking i'd like to see a pullback but at the same time i don't believe we're going to have it you know I, I just think there's so much cash being pumped into the market it's going to be a bit before we see it but if we hit a bump for whatever reason i think we are going to take a little bit of a correction of say 10 to 15 percent and i think that's going to be well worth it i think if it does fall down 10 or 15 percent that's the time to continue to invest not that you shouldn't be investing now don't wait to start investing if you're a brand new investor there's no point waiting to invest when you can start investing now and just dollar cost average on a weekly basis on a monthly basis whenever you can regardless of whether the market is moving higher or lower just as our roth 401ks your work plans you don't ever time the market on them you're always paying yourself in those accounts first prior to you getting your net income paid out to you so do the same as those work accounts and just kind of pay yourself on a weekly basis and continue to invest so that is going to be it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video again hit that subscribe hit the thumbs up and drop me a comment down below saying hello and that you made it to the end thank you all for tuning in i will see you next time have a great day bye